Netflix released the fourth season of its acclaimed drama, The Crown, reintroducing the masses to some chapters of royal family history that the Windsors would probably prefer to forget. In fact, many in the royal circle have strong opinions about the editorialized depiction of their lives, including the Queen. Still, nothing beats the move Prince Harry and Meghan Markle pulled to protect their stories. Watching an episode of The Crown is also accompanied by furious online searches, asking, did this really happen? The answer is usually yes, but not always. When there's a gap in the story that historians and fact-checkers can't substantiate, they definitely fudge the details, which creates some issues. The show's historical consultant, Robert Lacey, told Town & Country, We're not pretending this is a chronological record of those years. There are lots of documentaries that do that sort of thing. This is a drama which picks out particular objects. It's the show's artistic liberties that those close to the royal family have a problem with. As one inside source told Hello Magazine in 2020, it is a live autopsy, a pathological dissection of a living, breathing thing, and it should not be tolerated. Still, that hasn't prevented royal family members from taking a curious peek at a few of the show's seasons. If millions of people are going to learn about the juicy details of the UK's sovereign, surely they'd want to know what was being said. Even the Queen tuned in. Encouraged by her son, Prince Edward, the Queen herself watched the first season of The Crown. But what did Lilibet think of Claire Foy and the portrayal of her first few years as a monarch? The Sunday Express reported her feelings. A senior royal source told the publication in 2017 how Queen Elizabeth II really felt about the show. Happily, she really liked it. Although, obviously, there were some depictions of events that she found too heavily dramatized. Sadly, though, as the series continued, her approval waned. While every season so far has produced gasp-worthy spins on certain chapters in modern royal history, the fourth season focuses on the relationship that the world still can't get enough of, the marriage of Prince Charles and Diana, Princess of Wales. While it's no secret that Charles and Diana didn't have a perfect marriage, the series' fourth season paints a grim picture of how unhappy they both were. In some instances, the harsh truths portrayed on screen might have pushed too far. Throughout the season, the show provides a somber insight into Princess Diana's struggles with bulimia, made worse by the pressure and strains of her new place in an unfamiliar world. It also makes it very plain that she wasn't finding any comfort in her husband. A major thread of the season is how Princess Diana's extreme popularity drove a wedge into her marriage. During their historic 1983 Australian tour, the Prince of Wales wasn't pleased when his wife unintentionally upstaged him at every single event. One through line during the season which spans from 1977 until 1990, is the Prince of Wales' steady affair with the future Duchess Camilla Parker Bowles. Their constant contact and reluctance to keep it a secret didn't leave Charles looking very prince-like, which wasn't actually factual. What many from the royal camp argue is that the show picks and chooses which bits of history to gloss over, or simply not cover at all. Closed door conversations make up a large part of the show, and none of that can be substantiated. As Dickie Arbiter, former press secretary to the Queen, said to Hello, the Queen will be angry about how the Crown portrays the royal family, and disappointed that it's only focusing on their relationships. 
As far as the younger generation of the royal family goes, they won't be watching. Actress Olivia Colman, who plays Queen Elizabeth for seasons 3 and 4, spoke about meeting Prince William and asking him if he's seen it, to which he gave a resounding no. A source close to Prince Harry told Vanity Fair royal correspondent Katie Nichol that the feeling is that the latest series would actually be quite sad for Harry and his older brother, Prince William, to watch. Child versions of William and Harry do appear in the fourth season of the show, with some glimpses of the hands-on parenting style that Princess Diana insisted on taking. There's no doubt that the tender moments between the fictionalized Diana and her sons would drudge up difficult memories. The big question is, how far will the crown go? If it was up to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, not much further. As the dramatization of events grows steadily more current, so does the controversy. Despite their feelings about the crown, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex signed a deal with Netflix said to be worth over $250 million. Perhaps it's their belief that it's better to get in on the ground floor and control their own narrative. But others aren't sure that will work. The Mirror published statements from royal biographer Angela Levin, who shared that Prince Harry told her he planned to put pressure on the Netflix show, saying he was going to insist it stops before it reaches me. Levin believes that Prince Harry might be in for a rude awakening, saying Netflix could exploit the royal family further. In the meantime, The Crown provides unofficial history lessons about fascinating moments that won't make the textbooks, like when Diana gave the gift of dance. Gift giving in the royal family is a pretty big deal. They are the most famous family on the planet, after all. However, in recent years, presents have taken on a humorous tone as opposed to a heartfelt one. For example, Queen Elizabeth II was gifted a shower cap that read, Ain't life a bee, one year, while Prince Harry made off with a grow your own girlfriend kit. Gag gifts, however, weren't always the name of the game. Sure, the occasional jokey present was passed around, but one member who always tried to give her husband something near and dear to the heart was Princess Diana, and she usually hit it out of the park. Prince Charles was the lucky recipient of many of Diana's gifts over the years, and like any grateful husband, he opened them up with a smile on his face and love in his heart. For a while. However, in 1985, Charles was presented with something that didn't exactly go over the way Diana hoped it would, and he was left with a rather sour taste in his mouth. It all started with a Christmas gala. A lavish holiday celebration was set to unfold at the popular Covent Garden in London. Diana looked forward to the night's events, highlighted by an elaborate ballet routine that would dazzle everyone in attendance. It meant more to her than most people realized. Ballet held a special place in Diana's heart. She took lessons as a young child and even participated in English national ballet rehearsals as an adult. Her passion for dance was why she contacted a man named Wayne Sleep. Sleep was a famous dancer, director, choreographer, and actor who spent many years at the top of the ballet game, and Diana needed his expertise for the surprise she had planned for Charles. Diana had quite a vision when it came to the Christmas party. She told Sleep she wanted to choreograph a dance to Billy Joel's Uptown Girl for all the attendees, and Sleep was instantly on board. Sleep was more than familiar with Uptown Girl, and he carefully crafted a three-minute routine to perform alongside Diana. He presented the idea to the princess, and the two began rehearsing in secret. The two spent hours together, making sure the entire dance was nailed down to perfection. 
She was a princess, after all, and she wanted the performance to be nothing short of spectacular. Finally, the Christmas Gala arrived, and Diana was especially excited about the events that were about to unfold. She sat next to Charles for much of the night, but at one point, she quietly slipped out of sight. Charles didn't think much of Diana's absence. However, his jaw hit the floor a few minutes into the live dance performance when he realized exactly where his wife disappeared to. She was front and center on the stage. Charles couldn't believe his eyes. He knew Diana loved dancing, but he never thought the woman who was always so proper during royal celebrations could let her hair down in the funkiest way imaginable. He watched in awe. Sleep and Diana were a force on the stage. They had their Billy Joel routine down to the T, and they hit every mark they rehearsed. It could not have been a more perfect dance number for the two. The entire crowd of 2000 was stunned as they watched Diana absolutely crush the performance. Electricity flowed through her every move. The pair finished off with an epic finale, immediately met with wild applause. After the pair took their final bow, Sleep told Diana she had to also give a special bow to the royal box where Charles sat. According to Sleep, she responded with, I'm not bowing to him, he's my hubby. Now, you'd think Charles would have been the most delighted man in the audience, seeing that the star of the performance was his wife. However, he actually had the opposite reaction, which Diana did not see coming. Richard Kay, a friend of Diana's, admitted that Charles wasn't terribly impressed because he thought she was showing off. Regardless of his opinion, it took guts to do what Diana did, and she was pleased with herself. Hey, when it comes to gift giving, you can't always come out on top, which Diana quickly learned after leaving the dance stage. However, one royal who always knows how to garner a smile with a gift is the queen. It's been several years since the royal wedding that captivated the world. And though the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge haven't quite reached platinum status, the Queen still managed to give Kate a meaningful gift worthy of royalty. The Queen has much to be proud of when it comes to her granddaughter-in-law. Since becoming Duchess of Cambridge, Kate has been a poised role model for every kid who dreams of being royalty. And not only because she looks like a princess. She is passionate about charity work and is heavily involved in organizations like Action on Addiction, Place to Be, and East Anglia's Children's Hospice. Kate's work even takes her far away from the palace. As an ambassador, she's traveled all over the globe, often the guest of honor at memorials, charity events, and parties attended by the best and brightest. Kate's naturally approachable nature hasn't gone unnoticed, even at the top of the royal family. So when Kate's wedding anniversary rolled around, the Queen knew she had to give her something special. The Queen of England has access to more treasures than anyone else, so if anyone could give Kate the gift of a lifetime, it was her. But there's more to being royal than tiaras and jewels and the queen knew that Kate was worth more than sparkles. She had a different gift in mind for the duchess, one that couldn't be found in a palace. The queen had a lot to live up to considering the gifts she'd given to the couple on previous occasions. She's often given members of the royal family esteemed titles and honors over the years, and she has a history of giving her grandchildren lavish gifts. The gift she gave William and Kate on their wedding day was certainly lavish. She gave them Anmer Hall, which now serves as a second home for Will, Kate, and their kids. And as far as gifts go, the Queen wasn't done being generous. She provided the beautiful tiara Kate wore on her wedding day. 
Known as the Cartier Halo Tiara, it was originally purchased by the Queen's father and eventually passed down to Queen Elizabeth. The Queen isn't all about glitz and glam, however. The Queen actually prefers that the family exchange silly gifts at Christmas instead of something extravagant. We can only imagine what Kate gave the Queen. Judging by photos snapped by paparazzi, the Christmas shenanigans have only brought them closer. They often sit next to each other at events and are seen laughing and having a good time together. Clearly, they get along. And a unique item Kate wore to a Buckingham Palace state dinner in 2018 put their respect for each other on display. Affixed to Kate's gown was the badge of the royal family Order of Queen Elizabeth II. This is a rare item to see on a royal, since the Queen only gives the award to members of her family in honor of exemplary service. Still, the ivory badge of the royal family isn't the most prestigious award a family member can receive from the Queen. In April 2019, the Queen had something special in mind for Kate, and it blew the honorable ivory badge out of the water. For Kate's eighth wedding anniversary, the Queen presented her with the Dame Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order. This may not sound like a big deal, but its history makes it one of the most prestigious awards one can get. The Royal Victorian Order all started with, as you may have guessed, Queen Victoria herself. These awards are made personally by the Queen for services to the Sovereign, so it's a high honor. For Kate especially, this award means a lot. Kate will one day be Queen Consort, aka the wife of the King. If it seems like Kate is buried in responsibilities now, it will only increase when she becomes Queen Consort, and Queen Elizabeth has apparently started meeting with Kate in secret. It's believed that she's doing so in order to train Kate for her future queenly duties. Though she'll never have to make any political or militaristic decisions, she will be under an astounding amount of pressure from the public and the royal family. Not only will her status be elevated, but she'll have to deal with ceremonial duties that are specific to the queen consort. This is a lot on anyone's shoulders and a royal source let the public in on how those secret meetings were going. She's really taken Kate under her wing, the source said. The two of them will often spend hours discussing royal life and the future of the monarchy. Their friendship, it seems, goes even further than a badge, award, or sash. It doesn't take a lavish gift or honorable title to see how proud the Queen is of Kate's accomplishments. If anyone ever doubted Kate's ability to lead, the Queen's honor of the Royal Victorian Order is proof that the monarchy is in good hands. Thank you for watching!